Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be hopefully a hair and makeup tutorial. I kind of have this vision in my head of these like pigtail stacked braids. So hopefully I can achieve that look. Otherwise, this is just going to be a makeup tutorial. <laughs> so today's look is going to be a glittery and glossy look. I want to do like glittery eyes, glossy lips, maybe glossy cheeks. You know, we like it glossy. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the video. Um, as you can see, my face is way whiter than the rest of my body. Hashtag spray tan life. So when you first see me applying my foundation, you might think it's a little too dark and you're like, what the hell is she doing? But I have to match it to the rest of my body. Um, if you spray tan, you know about this. If you don't, you're probably like, what is she doing? Because I spray tan, my body stays tan but because I wash my face every single night. My face obviously gets really white super quick, probably the second day, probably the first day I have a spray tan on. So yeah. Don't be alarmed when you see my dark foundation. So I'm just gonna pin my hair back real quick. And I will be using hair extensions um, for the braid. Clearly, I'm not gonna do no little short mini braids. <laughs> so I've already moisturized my face, so we're just gonna move on to primer. I am back to using the Makeup Forever Skin Equalizer. Um, after leaving it for a little bit and using the Dr. Pores No More, no, Dr. Pores. After using the Dr. Brandt No More Pores for a while, I went back to this and discovered that I think this one is actually way better than the other one. I don't know. I think at first when you um, like try a new like pore minimizer, I think that they're all like, oh, but then you start using them for a while and you're like, eh. I just think, I don't know, something about this one. And then of course we're gonna do a little bit of lip mask. Keep these lips nice and moisturized. If you guys hear like any background noise, like birds or anything, I have my doors open because Manny is hanging out on the balcony. This is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and it is in the color 8, which is golden neutral. And then we're just going to, I just like to dot it all over my face with the applicator. Don't try to put your foundation on with this applicator, it just will not work. I can understand how like if you aren't like a makeup wearer and then you watch like a makeup video of people that are makeup wearers, you're probably like, holy sh- I'm not- I'm not doing all that. But it'd be kind of- once you like get into makeup, it kind of just becomes like second nature. And you don't think this is a lot of makeup. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take my beauty blender and we're gonna pounce this into the skin. Some people are like fast and furious with their beauty blender, um, but I use really light pressure when I use my beauty blender. Like I'm barely pushing into the skin just enough to get it blended. I like number eight. Number eight's a good color. It doesn't really have like a pink tinge to it like six does, or 6.5. Keep calling it six, but it's 6.5. Make sure you drag it down underneath your neck, you know, <laughs> just to make sure everything's blending well. I had to go to the dentist on Thursday, emergency dentist appointment. So I kind of been like on pain medication for the past two days. So I tried to film yesterday and I looked at the footage and I felt like I looked like like loopy and shit. Um, so back today, I didn't take it this morning because I wanted to be able to film today because I knew I was going to the dentist tomorrow. So I just put a little bit of like numbing cream like on my tooth get me through this video. <laughs> and then once it's all blended, I'll just go over it like with big pounces of the beauty blender just to pick up any excess product that's on the skin. So I always feel like my color is a little off at first just because I spray tan like I said and I'm usually just always 50 shades of tan or pale. But by the end of the video when we put like our concealer and our powder and our bronzer and everything, it just kind of works its way into being a color that kind of works for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on and do my brows. Game of Thrones is on tonight. <laughs> I have to get a root canal on my top tooth tomorrow, like my top furthest back tooth. And I'm like, how the hell is that gonna work out? They're gonna like turn me upside down and like get in there? Like I've never had a root canal on my top tooth. I just like wanna get like all my teeth like ripped out and just get veneer so I don't have to like worry about a toothache ever again when there's only three things on your workspace but you can't even find what you're looking for. So who still thinks Jon Snow is alive? So moving on to the eyes, they're going to be super duper easy. We're going to use the Ideal Duo from Dose of Colors and this is a pigment and loose primer. No. <laughs> It's a loose pigment and primer in one, um, and we're going to use the color Shell, but I'm not going to use the primer with it. I'm only going to use the pigment. So it comes with a coordinating pigment. Right? 
So it comes with a coordinating primer that you can put on your lid and then put the pigment on top of it. But I'm just going to use the pigment itself because I kind of like how the pigment, this color in general, shell, looks on its own. So I'm just going to get a flat brush. And since I already have kind of foundation concealer on my lids, it's going to have a nice little base to stick to. So I'm just going to pick this up on a brush and then we're just going to push this right onto our lid. You want to make sure you're pushing it onto your lid instead of like sweeping it onto your lid so that you're not getting a lot of the sparkles falling out onto your face because we already have our foundation on. If you don't have your foundation on already, then you can, you know, just basically do whatever you want because you're not going to mess anything up. So you can just keep pushing it on until you kind of build it up to your liking. I'm only doing it like right on my lid. Kind of trying to stay away from the crease because since my lids kind of fold on top of each other it'll just make it way it's it'll just make its way up there at some point so trying to keep it away from there for as long as i can so that is it for our eyes if you want to add a little bit of crease color be my guest so then next we're just going to curl our natural lashes uh, 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 uh. Ow. and then add a little bit of mascara so moving on to lashes, since this look is pretty neutral and toned down, I'm going to amp it up a little bit with our lash, and I'm going to wear these lashes from Velour. I don't have the box for them because these are my second time wearing them, but this is the lash, which you probably can barely see. I'll just put a picture here of what they are. These are the fluff and cool lashes. So these are faux silk lashes, and you can wear these like a bunch of times. So um, like I said, because the look is kind of natural, I'm going to amp it up with a fuller lash and I really like these lashes because even though they're a full lash they're not a super long lash and I'm kind of more into a fuller shorter length lash these days so I'm gonna throw these guys on real quick can't wait for Game of Thrones I always like to apply my lash when my eyes open I think it helps to keep your lash like upward instead of trying to put your lash on when your eyes close so for concealer today, I'm going to use my NYX, I always want to call it Ultra HD, but Ultra HD is Make It Forever. This is the HD Photogenic Concealer and is in the color of CW03. And we're just going to use this to brighten up the under eye area and just conceal any darkness that's under there. And then again, with just stamping, pushing motions, we're just going to push the product into the skin. And the brush that I'm using is so bomb for patting out your concealer underneath your eye. This is the Soft Blend Concealer Brush from Sigma. Like this is the only thing that I used for underneath here, is just this brush. Just to be sure, we'll take our Beauty Blender and just pounce it lightly to pick up any excess concealer so that we don't get a lot of creasing underneath our eye. And then we're going to set with you know what we're setting with. We're gonna set with our Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. And now we bright under there. And then to set our whole face, I am gonna use my Studio Fix powder like I always do. It's just I'm not gonna pick it up as heavy. I'm just going to swirl some of it on there, tap it off, and then just use whatever's on the brush to set the rest of my makeup with. So to bronze up the face a little bit, I'm going to again use this NARS Laguna Bronzer. If you missed my last video where I did that like Snapchat jeweled eye filter, I talked about this. I got this at Namie's. I don't know if it's limited edition or what, but it's just a huge pan of Laguna Bronzer, which is a great brown olive tone bronzer. There's no like oranginess in it, which is um, a lot of bronzers have. And oh, it just smells so delicious. So we're just going to bronze up the face. It smells like flowers so my camera just freezes on me sometimes and I don't even realize it um, I just added a little bit of loose powder here because sometimes I get a little uh, crazy with my bronzer so I just use a little bit of this is the NARS soft velvet loose powder and just a cosmetic wedge not to really bake but just to kind of clean up my edges a little bit and they're so uneven right now so we'll just let that sit there for a second and we're gonna move on to blush I think I'm gonna use this guy right here, which is from Mac and it's called make you mine Because I don't want a lot of like blush color That's a lot of blush color <laughs> Again taking your dual fiber brush <laughs> You can just sweep all that away 
And then for our highlight today, we're going to use Starburst from Anastasia. Surprise, surprise. I'm not going to use Crush Pearl. We're going to use Starbrush. What? We're going to use Starburst. <laughs> Tone it down, hit it with the stippling brush first to knock off the excess powder, and then go over it. We're gonna just give this a little spray. And then we'll go over it to melt it into the skin. And then take your <laughs> and then take your blush brush. You don't have to put any excess product on it, but you can just go right over your cheeks to bring the color back a little bit because sometimes the highlight kind of overtakes that. And then I just like to go over the highlight one more time with like a big fluffy brush. This doesn't, it's like very flimsy so it's great to highlight with. This is a Morphe 500. Just pick up a little bit of the highlight and then just go over your cheek like all together to really get glowing. Woo, girl. Okay, so we're basically done. All we're gonna do is our lip. I think I want to do this like little nudie brown lip. This is from Anastasia and is in the color Ashton. I had it on the other day and I really liked how it looked. So you can either do a nude lip, you can do a really bright pink lip with this, but I'm going to kind of go for like a little bit of a nudie brown look. I'm also then going to add a little bit of nude to it. This is from Velvet 59 and it's in the color Vanilla Macaroon. So we're going to add this here. And then I'm just taking a lip pencil or a lip brush. Kind of meshing these together. Fingers work just as good. <laughs> and then to finish our lip, I'm going to use this Eves by Eve. And this one is the Luminous Shine Volumizing Lip Luster, which I talked about in one of my favorites. This one is in the color Golden Ray. And I'm just going to put this right on top. It has a little bit of gold shimmer in it. These glosses are really nice. They have um, a really nice feel to them. They're not sticky at all. They're really smooth and they also taste good and smell really good. So this is the finished look. Glittery, glowy, glossy, you know, all of the above. <laughs> so now we're going to try to braid this hair. Hopefully it kind of comes out how I see it in my head. I was just on Pinterest last night and I was looking at like tons of braided hair. I didn't see this particular one. Like I saw stacked braids, but I didn't see like these pigtail stacked braids. And I feel like I had a dream about it last night because I woke up and I was like, oh, I have to try it. So we're going to try it and hope that it works out for us. So I'm going to use these extensions from Bellamy. These are the Guy Tang Bailage extensions. Um, I forget the number, but I will list it in the bottom bar of what the color of these extensions are. You always want to make sure that you brush your hair out before you braid it. It'll just be easier for you <clears throat> if there's no tangles or anything in your hair. And then I'm going to wear mine down the middle. So, voila. And then we're just going to clip this little guy up out the way while we work on this braid. Make sure you have some little elastics. My hair and an old <laughs> eyelash things, they exploded everywhere. So we're just going to section the top and then kind of go in a down motion. If you didn't see my how I Dutch braid pigtails, maybe watch that video too. I'll show you a little bit slower on how I clip in my extensions. But basically we're just gonna clip them in going down like this so they hide in our hair. If I can braid, you can braid. Now we're just gonna let this hair fall over. I think I might need to add two extensions for this one because we're gonna do a stacked braid so it's going to be like a fishtail braid and then a regular braid stacked on top of that braid. That's the cool thing about clip-in extensions is you can just clip them where you need them. So that should be enough hair for me to work with. So I'm gonna start my braid, like a Dutch braid on top. So I'm just going to take a section of hair, split it into three parts, and start braiding. One, two, three. And we're gonna pull everything underneath the middle section of hair. So we're gonna take this front piece, and we're gonna pull it underneath the middle piece. And then we're gonna take our back piece, pull it underneath the middle piece. I like to do this two times without adding hair, just to kind of start a base. And then we'll start adding hair. So you take your front piece, You'll grab a little bit of hair, add it to that, and then put that underneath your middle piece. You're gonna grab from your back, you're gonna add a little bit more hair from there, and you're gonna add that underneath your middle. 
and then you're just going to repeat. It's very repetitive. You're just grabbing and adding hair and pulling it underneath the middle section of hair. And try to keep everything nice and tight when you're braiding. Even though we do loosen up our braid, I like to make sure it's tight to begin with and then we can loosen when we want to. Oh my God, children are screaming out the window. I'm just gonna grab all this hair that's left back here and add that to our back piece and braid that in real quick just because it doesn't really matter. And then braid that. Okay, so then when we get to here, I'm going to stop and I'm gonna tie this off. it'll loop twice so we'll just loop it once we're gonna do two braids here I'm gonna split this here so this we're gonna braid just as a regular braid so you're just gonna split it into three sections and then we're just going to braid normally again you can try to be tight with your braids and then we'll loosen everything at the end because you know that I like a more messy looking look I can't tell if I'm in focus or not. I'm so sorry. And then I'm going to tie him off. So then I'm going to take the rest of this hair and we're going to fishtail this. So try to kind of get this guy out of your way if you can. So then I just clip that braid up out of the way so we can work on our fishtail. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your remaining hair, remaining hair, remaining, remaining hair, and you're going to split it into two sections and then we're just going to fishtail this. So how you fishtail is like you split it in two sections and then you take hair from the back of either side and you pull it over and you add it to the other side. So then you take hair from the back and you add it over to the other side. Again, we're gonna add take hair from the back and then you just put it over. To start it, it's a little like, what? But you'll get it. So take it, and we'll pull it over, add it to the hair. This is the most time, time consuming part to me is fishtail braiding. Cause I'm still kind of a little rough at it. <laughs> and then eventually it'll start to look like a fishtail braid. So with braiding, it's just very repetitive. So you're just gonna keep doing the same thing over and over grabbing sections from the back and adding them to the opposite side. And see, we kind of have a little fishtail coming along. <laughs> So I'm gonna tie this guy off for now. We do still have a lot of hair at the end, but I wanna start pulling the braid out, meaning I'm gonna start making it bigger. So what I do is tie it off where the braid ends, so you can see all the excess hair, and then I'm just going to slide it down a little bit so we have room to start pulling out our braid. So what you wanna do is just start pulling it to, making it, to make it look bigger. So then you can pull, slide this down more so you have more room to pull. Just be careful. I want this guy to be pretty big, so I'm just gonna keep pulling. And then we can take this guy, this braid, and do the same thing. We're gonna slide this down and then start pulling this braid out. You don't want to make this one too big because this braid is going to sit right here on top of this braid, on top of your other braid. So you can just pull it out enough, keep pulling this guy. And then what you want to do is you want to line up your two braids so they sit on top of each other like this. And then you can take the elastics out. So I pulled out the one um, elastic from our top braid and I'm going to leave the fishtail bottom one in and I'm just going to tie these off right where that other guy is. And then I'm just going to pin it in the middle of the braid to connect the two braids together. 
Should have got blonde ones because you can just see that guy hanging there. So then we can loosen this up a little bit too. So it matches all the rest of our madness happening. So all I do is just pull the braid and it'll loosen it up for you. And then I'm gonna pin the braid right here to my head. Like that. And we have stacked, well we have one stacked pigtail. Okay, so here's our stacked braid. It is a fishtail and a just regular three strand on top of it. It's a little messy, but I like it like that. Should I kind of separate the two so you can see the fishtail and the regular? I think I like it better like that. These are stacked down the middle, like it's just laying on top. But as I get to the bottom, I want you to be able to tell that we have a regular and a fishtail. So I'm just going to keep them like this, close to each other, like next to each other, and then pin them that way. So you can tell what we've got going on. This freaking gold bobby pin is not doing me any justice. <laughs> Whatever. Alright, so now we're going to try to attempt to do the other side. I always struggle more so with this side of my hair than this side, which is, I don't know why. Okay, okay, okay. I love it. I'm not going to talk through this one so we can get this guy done quicker, um, but we're just going to do the same exact thing. Except for these bobby pins that don't go with my hair. <laughs> if you're gonna do these braids, get bobby pins that match your hair color. Don't be running around with black ones if you got blonde hair and gold. <laughs> so I'm super excited on how these came out. I love them so much. I am really into the braided pigtails. I think that they're a super cute way to keep all your hair off your face if you don't wanna wear it in like a messy bun like I'm always doing. Um, it's a great alternative. And I just like this one a lot more. It kind of is just a little bit different than the normal pigtail braids everyone is wearing. So. Go us. Of course, it does take a little bit more time, but I think it just looks so cool. And I think the messier the braid, the cooler it looks. That's just me. I like really messy, boho-y looking hair, but you can totally make this look a little more put together. You know, you just don't have to pull it apart as much as I did. But like I said, I'm totally into messy textured braids. I just think it makes them look more better, more better, mo better. <laughs> So um, I hope you guys try it out. It is super easy to do. I promise you I would not steer you guys wrong. It just takes a little bit of practice. That's all that it is. Braiding is super repetitive. And remember, if you're struggling, try not looking in a mirror. Just try doing it with your hands. Because for some reason, when you look in a mirror or I look at my viewfinder, I always like flub. And if you have to start over, don't feel discouraged. I usually always have to start my braids over. So don't get discouraged if you don't get it on your first time. I promise you, if you just practice, you will get it and you'll soon be able to wrap these cute little stacked pigtail dutch braids i don't even know we'll just call them stacked dutch braids uh. so i hope you guys enjoyed i don't think i have anything else to tell you i'm excited for game of thrones tonight 
and I'm not excited for my root canal tomorrow. <laughs> Wish me luck. So that is it for this video. If you do recreate this look, please uh, tweet it to me or tag me on Instagram because I love to see your guys' recreations. And yeah, I don't think I have anything else to tell you guys except I love you. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will talk to you guys soon.